After months of waiting, speculating, and anticipation, Power Rangers Beast Morphers is finally here. The 21st season of Power Rangers, not separating Super Seasons, or the 26th season if you do separate, has had a lot of attention gathered around it. Not only was the trailer number 6 trending on YouTube, but the premiere episode was trending on Twitter all morning. One of the main reasons this season has been so eagerly awaited is the fact that it's the first season to be produced under Hasbro after they bought Power Rangers from Saban last year, in 2018. Now, while I didn't hate the Neo Saban era of Power Rangers, as many did, and I'll definitely talk more about the Neo Saban era in another video, I can definitely say it was a weak era in the franchise overall. With Hasbro stepping up, speculation and expectation for what they could deliver has been rampant. Now that Beast Morphers has premiered its first episode, let's see if Hasbro starts off with a great first impression, or if we should probably lower our expectations for the next era in Power Rangers. Now starting off, Beast Morphers already has a major disadvantage, that being its 8am time slot. Most of the Neo Saban era aired around noon, but Beast Morphers has been stuck with 8am. The era of Saturday morning cartoons has long since gone by, and almost nobody, child or adult, would gladly wake up at 8am on a Saturday for one single cartoon. Luckily, DVR recording does exist for those unable to or unwilling to wake up this early, plus watching it online is also an option. For the premiere though, I did wake up at 8am to watch it live. Waking up at 8am just for Power Rangers? That means the show better have been good. And let me just say, I wasn't disappointed in the slightest, I'll wake up at 8am again. It was well worth catching it live, and I'm gonna be doing my best to watch every episode live no matter how early it is, it's that good. The first episode was an amazing first episode. I can genuinely say it felt like one of the best first episodes in years of Power Rangers. The episode is paced so well, giving it time to establish our main characters, our supporting characters, the villains are clearly established, character conflicts, relationships, everything is set up so good. The main plot is started, we have some nice world building, there's great action scenes, the humor works well. The first episode feels like it goes by so fast, when it's over, you're surprised that's the end. But it manages to set up so much time, you can't be disappointed. The main premise of Power Rangers Beast Morphers is that an organization, known as Grid Battle Force, is attempting to harness the Morphing Grid, the energy source that gives all Power Rangers their powers, in an attempt to create unlimited energy and eliminate pollution. A great goal. They also combine the Morphing Grid energy, which they call Morph X, with animal DNA to create the next series of Power Rangers, the Beast Morphers. Things just don't go well for Grid Battle Force though, because an evil computer program named Evox enters their system in order to take over the Morphing Grid. The new Ranger team is tasked with stopping Evox. Now this is a rather simple and basic premise for Power Rangers. The way Beast Morphers executes the premise, however, is done so well. It sets up for an interesting season that provides plenty for viewers to enjoy in the future. The characters themselves seem to have so much going for them. Starting off with our three Rangers, Devin, Ravi, and Zoe. They each offer something unique to the team, and it looks like the team dynamic is going to be great this season. Devin seems to be very much the kind of person who does whatever he wants, whenever he wants. His first season, where he fights Blaze at the gym, shows he's not only a skilled fighter, but he doesn't really listen to authority figures. This is followed up nicely with the relationship he holds with his father. He disobeys him, he sneaks into Grid's battle force, and he just wants to try out their simulator. He doesn't really care about being there. Despite him displaying issues with authority, he does have a good heart. He tries to warn Grid Battle Force about Evox when he notices it, and he goes to help out when the evil avatars are attacking. Ravi is the opposite of Devin, having a high respect towards authority. He breaks up with his girlfriend Roxy due to the fact that they were both chosen as rangers, and Grid Battle Force has a strict rangers can't date each other rule. A rule that was obviously made after someone watched the Disney era of Power Rangers, because that era had next to no romance. Ravi has the most defined motivation of the three rangers so far. He wants to save his friends Blaze and Roxy. He's the most invested in defeating Evox, and has the most to lose because of this situation. I can easily see Devin and Ravi having a conflict with each other in the first few episodes, because of their drastically different looks at authority figures, as well as how much they personally care about defeating Evox. This is of course where Zoe comes in, because she's very clearly meant to be the heart of this team. She joined Grid Battle Force wanting to make a difference, but she was quickly cut and delegated to working in the laundry department. Despite this outcome, she maintains a warm outlook on everything, and positivity. Her model that she solves big problems easily shows her determination and her willingness to fight when necessary. Another interesting aspect of her character is her slight reluctance at the end of the premiere. Even though she wanted to be a ranger, she knows this wasn't her role. It was supposed to be Roxy who was a ranger, not her. I can see her gaining confidence in herself and continuing her desire to help being a main part of her character growth over the course of this season. 
Of the three rangers, I have to say Zoe is currently my favorite by far. Her personality and characterization are just great, and I hope she doesn't get ignored in favor of solely developing Devin and Robbie, as what sort of tends to happen to most female rangers. Devin would be my second favorite, simply because we just didn't see that much of Ravi in his personality. But I can say, Ravi could easily become one of my favorite Blue Rangers if he gets a good amount of development and they properly utilize the high personal stakes he has in this story. The supporting cast is rather large this season, but they all seem to be such great characters. I hope they get used well, rather than being forgotten over the Rangers, as tends to happen to other supporting casts in the franchise. First we have Nate, a genius prodigy who is working at Grid Battle Force. The genius prodigy trope has admittedly been done quite a lot in Power Rangers, but it always resulted in such great characters. Some of my favorite characters in the entire franchise belong to the genius trope, so Nate is already a great character in my book and I can't wait to see more from him. Hopefully he does get to do more than just make the rangers weapons and zords. Next we have Mayor Daniels, the mayor of Coral Harbor, and the father of Devon. I really love the fact that he's against Grid Battle Force's idea to harness Morphex, because it puts him in opposition to the ranger while still being considered an ally character. Since he doesn't know the identity of the rangers, I can easily see major conflict down the road when he finds out Devin is the red ranger. Hopefully they save that idea for later rather than sooner, because if they make the reveal too quickly, it can diminish the possible tension it has behind it and ruin a good idea. A lot of people seem to be comparing Devin and Mayor Daniels to Scott and Commander Truman from Power Rangers RPM, but personally, I think their dynamic is just a bit more similar to Wes and Mr. Collins from Power Rangers Time Force. There is, however, a relationship that is quite similar to Scott and Commander Truman, and that being Ravi and Commander Shaw. Commander Shaw is Ravi's mother, as well as the head of Grid Battle Force, and she is very clearly a no-nonsense leader. The fact that she made a rule against Rangers dating shows she wants them to do what they have to do and not be distracted by anything else such as a frivolous relationship. If they keep her personality as tough and as strict as she was in the premiere, I can easily see her matching up to Commander Kruger and Lieutenant Mitchells in terms of high-ranking Power Rangers mentors. We didn't get too much of the mother-son dynamic between Ravi and Commander Shaw in the episode, barely teasing it at the end, but I would not doubt it at all if she treats Ravi like a soldier rather than her son. I'm quite interested in seeing the direction they take between those two, especially when Ravi starts to lighten up over the course of the season due to the influence that Devin and Zoe will have on him. The final supporting character we have is the comedic relief duo this time being siblings Betty and Ben. While comedic duos often get a lot of hate, I personally don't mind them, and I even found Victor and Monty to not be as bad as people have said. As for Ben and Betty, their humor is much more than just slapstick comedy, and it fits their role in the story very nicely. They're employees at Grid Battle Force. They want to do their best, but they often just end up messing up. I think they sort of compare best to Boom from Power Rangers SPD, since he always tried to do the best at his job, but kind of managed to mess it up somehow. Another thing that helps Betty and Ben stand out as comedy characters is that they aren't antagonistic comedy. The jokes done aren't purely at their expense because they're trying to do something bad like Bulk and Skull or Victor and Monty. They have a lot of heart, they're genuinely funny, and I can't wait to see more from them, especially if they evolve and grow beyond just being comedic relief. Finally, we have our villains. The villain is so far the only department where the premiere just wasn't the best it could be in my opinion. The main villain of Ewoks only briefly appeared and he only had like one or two lines. While I imagine we will get a lot more backstory and an origin for Evox later on that'll flesh out his motivation, the premiere just really disappointed with him. It managed to make up for the lackluster main villain, however, with the secondary villains of Blaze and Roxy. Blaze and Roxy were the original two candidates for the Ranger program, along with Ravi. The pair got corrupted in the process, however, due to Evox, and they became his dark avatars, with the originals being stuck in a comatose state. While I originally thought Evox would corrupt Blaze and Roxy themselves, Creating evil avatars of them is an interestingly different direction to take things. Hopefully the avatar forms of them still have the ability to don a human disguise so they can be more than just henchmen for Evox. I also hope that Dark Blaze and Dark Roxy attempt some sort of mental or emotional manipulation against the rangers, especially Ravi who the two were close to. As for their human counterparts, assuming the evil counterparts retain some of the memories and have a somewhat similar personality to them, there's so much to work with. Blaze can be very hot-headed, seeing as how he lashed out against Devin for not listening to him during the karate lesson. Blaze seems to hold a personal grudge against Devin, and if this grudge were to transfer to Dark Blaze, that would make for a brilliant rivalry. Blaze seems to be somewhat similar to Jared when comparing the first episode of Beast Morphers to the first episode of Jungle Fury. Jared was an interesting villain, so if they handle Blaze in a similar manner, I think it's going to be something worth watching for sure. As for Roxy, her personality wasn't that clearly established in the premiere. 
We do know she's hurt because of Robbie breaking up with her over the no ranger dating rule. Perhaps Dark Roxy could use this pain to try and manipulate or guilt Robbie. Perhaps she can use Dark Blaze to try to make him jealous and weak. There isn't that much for her so far, so I hope they flesh her out more as they do Blaze. Since there's only two of them, Zoe doesn't really have a dark rival. Seeing as how she does work at Grid Battle Force and she did want to be a ranger, there's the possibility that she once idolized Blaze and Roxy, more so Roxy as another female figure. Other than that possible idolization, Zoe just doesn't seem to have any real link, a bad sign for my current favorite ranger this season. Hopefully the villains get more fleshed out in the season, as they were admittedly the weakest part of the premiere. Power Rangers is known for having great villains, and even the Neo Saban era managed to have amazing villains, such as Decker, Sledge, Heckle and Snide, and Ninja Steel Madame Odious. Specifically Ninja Steel, because Super Ninja Steel kind of ruined her character. There's potential for Blaze and Roxy, along with Evox set up. Now we just need to wait to see how the execution plays out. Seeing as how Power Rangers is primarily an action series, the action scenes are probably what a lot of people are expecting and looking forward to. While the premiere only had one short, more fight, they did have two civilian fights, and they were both done so well. The first fight between Devin and Robbie worked well to establish the rivalry between them, as well as to establish Devin's ability as a fighter. It had great choreography. It was easy to follow along with. The second civilian fight featured Devin, Robbie, and Zoe against Dark Blaze and Dark Roxy. In this fight, they managed to show off the differences in fighting style and abilities among our three rangers. Devin and Robbie seemed to be evenly matched, with Devin having a slight edge, while Zoe was more so running around and throwing things than actually fighting. Her abilities are notably less compared to the two guys. The fact that the three rangers lost the fight is also so important, because it shows us they're outmatched against Dark Blaze and Dark Roxy until they manage to morph. The morph fight itself was short, but enjoyable. The incorporation of Cheetah, Jackrabbit, and Gorilla DNA within the Rangers was well established and it made for some unique moments in the fight. A great sign of the fights to come is that the fights were not only entertaining for the audience to watch, but they also worked well at propelling the story further. They provide great character moments, great insight into the characters, which is something that good action scenes should have, especially in a premiere episode. The fighting itself was also notably not overstuffed with dialogue or jokes, the way most fights in the Neo Saban era were. Dialogue and jokes were a common complaint many had about the Neo Saban era fights, so this is an improvement for many. Hopefully fights later on in the season continue to be as good as the ones in this episode, because they set the bar really high so far. The acting has also improved quite a lot. While Power Rangers has always been somewhat known for cheesy dialogue and bad acting, some Rangers simply haven't had the best acting ever. This is of course not the fault of any actor. They do the best with what they have, and they're often told to follow a specific direction which just doesn't work out. This time around, it seems the actors either have better direction or a lot more freedom because the acting is just so well done. The characters display a large range of emotions, whereas past seasons had very limited emotion. It wasn't perfect acting by any means, but personally I think that's fine because I find bad acting to be one of the things that gives Power Rangers a unique charm to it. It was enjoyable nonetheless, and it was a major step up from the stilted and wooden acting that we've had for quite a while. I'm glad these actors were able to show off their abilities better than previous actors just unfortunately couldn't under Neo Saban. The set direction and costumes look great throughout the episode. Grid Battle Force headquarters looks fantastically amazing. It reminds me personally of, of SPD headquarters, mixed slightly with the Aqua Base from Lightspeed Rescue. It looks like an advanced and futuristic facility, and seeing as how Beast Morphers is supposed to be sometime in the future, that set matches the description. I feel it does this perfectly. As for the design of the Grid Battle Force employees, they also look just great. Something I always enjoy about organization uniforms in science fiction is the uniform you wear is supposed to be associated with the occupation you have. This helps viewers to easily identify the role each character, each supporting character, and even background characters have and play in the organization. In Beast Morphers, we see this range. Scientists like Nate have a simple uniform and a lab coat over it. Those who work in the laundry or other simple tasks like Zoe wear a simple brown uniform. People who work in security like Betty and Ben wear a black uniform. The three rangers are given their own unique uniform that works as a more sophisticated version of the standard uniform and they each have it in their own color. Finally at the top we have Commander Shaw who has her own unique uniform that looks to be an upgraded and more advanced version of the rangers uniform. The outfits all work well to show the structure of Grid Battle Force as an organization. The logo for Grid Battle Force is simple yet unique. It works as an interesting way to explain the letters GB on all of the Rangers equipment. A great set is important as it is where we're going to find our Rangers most of the time. 
as it stands, Grid Battle Force Headquarters is currently one of my favorite Ranger bases because it has so much going for it, from the set, to the outfits, to the logo, to everything. I can't wait to see how they expand and flesh it out, showing off possibly new rooms, different locations, everything's going to be great about it and I want to see more. The final thing worth mentioning is just how much love for the franchise Beast Morpher seems to have. There were a lot of nods to previous seasons in this episode. The best thing is, these references didn't feel like they were pointless fanservice, but rather they made sense in the context of the story, which is important and wonderful. The most apparent one was Mayor Daniels mentioning Rita Repulsa, Sledge, and Galvanax as villains who wanted the Rangers' powers. It makes sense from a production standpoint to pick these, because Sledge and Galvanax are the latest villains and Rita is the most iconic in the franchise, but it doesn't feel forced at all. It was a natural line that worked for the continuity and world building that also made sense in the series itself. The gym at the beginning of the episode looked very similar to Ernie's gym in Juice Bar. Other than having a similar look to it though, there was not a single forced reference to Ernie's. Unlike in Megaforce, where they literally named their smoothie shop Ernie's as a reference to Ernie's Juice Bar, here they just had the set look similar and let the rest play out naturally. The karate lesson played out naturally. These references are nice for longtime fans, and it shows Hasbro does care about the franchise, but they aren't overt and distracting or irritating. They work into the story well, and they make sense. This is the best way to handle fan service in my opinion, because it isn't overbearing. Overall, I have to say the premiere of Power Rangers Beast Morphers was far worth waking up at 8am for, and a near perfect start to the season, and a near perfect start to the Hasbro era as a whole. The characters were set up to have a lot of potential. The supporting cast is great and wonderful. The villains, while a bit weak, have so much potential to them. Everything is paced so well, you just want more by the end. I didn't really speak about the theme song, because that's technically not part of the premiere, but let me just say I liked it. It's a unique song, with an interesting use of autotune to fit the seasonal theme. The major problem I have with it is that it's just far too short. Despite that flaw, I have to say it does grow on you quickly, and it's a good start for the season. The synopsis for the next two episodes have been revealed. Episode 2 is supposed to be focusing on the team fighting over who should be leader. This is a typical Power Rangers early season plot, but it's a great one nonetheless. Devin will probably want to be the leader, as he's arguably the most skilled fighter, while Ravi will want to be the leader because he's the only original candidate to be a ranger left. I see this being the start of a great dynamic between the two. Episode 3 is where we'll really get an idea for how this season is going to be, as that is where the episodic episodes begin. Episode 3 focuses on Zoe wanting people to use Morphex bikes for transportation in order to lower pollution levels. The most common complaint of the Neo Soban era is their episodic episodes and their forced morals. We'll just have to see how Beast Morphers and how Hasbro handles the episodic themselves. Personally, I'm confident in Hasbro and things are looking great for the franchise. Beast Morphers has had the strongest start in a long time, one of my personal favorite premieres. There's talks for another theatrical Power Rangers film, the Battle for the Grid video game is releasing soon, the comics are still going strong, the toys look amazing quality, the live show is coming back, and so much more. Not too bad for a dead brand, if you know what I'm talking about. Let me know what you thought of the premiere for Power Rangers Beast Morphers. Are you as excited for the season as I am, or did the premiere not blow you away like it did for me? I'd love to have a discussion, so let me know in the comments below what you think of the premiere and what you think of Hasbro so far. I'm not going to be doing something like this for every episode, but if there's a great one that I have a lot to say about, you can expect a video. I also plan to talk about the season as a whole when it's done, so we can see how the end result compares to my first impression. Hopefully I'm right rather than wrong, but I'm heavily optimistic towards the end result, and we'll just have to see what happens. Hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time.